It's been a whirlwind week here at the NCAA convention, but one filled with plans for a bright future in intercollegiate athletics. I'm Alexia Grievous, back with you on Inside the NCAA, and we're going to take a look at all the events over the past five days. We started with a number of informational workshops, as well as Divisions 2 II and 3 Management Council meetings on Wednesday. On Thursday, the attendees were introduced to NCAA Executive Vice President of Regulatory Affairs, Oliver Luck. Luck hosted the keynote luncheon and was joined by the chairs of the Divisions 1, 2, and 3 Student Athlete Advisory Committees for a discussion on the importance of the student athlete voice. The luncheon also featured the NCAA and Minority Opportunities Athletic Association's Award for Diversity and Inclusion presented to Colorado State University for their creation of programs that center on educating student athletes and staff about the benefits of inclusion. Menu sessions and Division II and III President's Council meetings fill the day leading up to NCAA President Mark Emmert's State of the Association Address. President Emmert discussed the challenges facing the association today and reaffirmed the overall mission of preparing the over 460,000 student athletes for success in life. President Emmert also presented the Gerald R. Ford Award to University of Hartford President Walter Harrison. The Ford Award honors an individual who has provided significant leadership as an advocate for intercollegiate athletics on a continuous basis over the course of their career. Friday was a historic day as the newly created Board of Governors, Division I Council, and Division I Committee on Academics gathered in person for the first time to chart the direction for the future of Division I. The night was capped off with the honor celebration where the today's top 10, Silver, Inspiration, Valor, and Teddy Awards were all presented. Saturday wrapped up the Division I Board of Directors, Division II and III Business Sessions, and Divisional SACs, as well as FCS and Division I Conferences, and Division I Autonomy Business Session Meetings, with Sunday bringing the conclusion of the Division I Business Session. The groups left with a clear direction of where the respective divisions are heading, as well as the association as a whole. All of the meetings and events are covered in full detail on NCAA.org, so be sure to check it out for more information. Thank you for tuning in and continuing to support the over 460,000 student-athletes.